AC generator actually operating. Earlier I had made a multi-part series on designing and constructing this 12 volt generator and I covered a lot of the technical details and why things were done, things that worked, things that didn't, and a lot of people just wanted to see it running. Now I didn't show that because it isn't all that informational, but perhaps it's entertaining. So today I'm going to show this setup actually running with my 1000 amp hour battery bank and my inverter. And this is what I can use during a power outage to actually power my entire house, minus the AC and the heat. I have backup heat that I can use. So let's take a closer look at it. And here is the 12 volt generator. Now, it may look a little bit hokey, but this actually is engineered and optimized for this particular setup. And I won't go over all of the details here, but I'm at least going to give a summary because I'm sure not all of you want to watch the, I think it was a 10 part series that I made on actually constructing this. So if you want to build one like this, I'll, I'll go over the components that you actually need. First of all, I put this on a wooden platform. That's not the optimal setup, but that's what I had on hand and I don't like buying things if I don't need to. So I put it on this particular board and it worked okay, but the board was a little bit too flexible. So I took an old satellite dish uh, pole and just bolted it to this particular wooden board. That keeps it from flexing and makes it rigid enough to actually work. For the exhaust, I just ran some flux pipe to a muffler and then uh, out underneath my garage door. And I'll show how I do that a little bit later. I tested that for carbon monoxide, etc. And it is safe for me to use. One thing that I did not note on my video about how to quiet a generator is that this is very important. You need to mush up the end of the uh, pipe. This two inch exhaust pipe is way too large. It's entirely unnecessary for an engine of 183 cc's, which is what that one is. And this makes it significantly quieter. Really the only sound left is the mechanical noise from the engine. It's much quieter that way. So. That's something I should have mentioned in the previous video, but uh, I did not do that yet, so it was not in that video. In any case, this particular engine here is 6 horsepower. Ignore this. It's irrelevant. What matters is the displacement. For a setup like this, you want a about 180 cc's of displacement if you have an overhead valve engine, around 200 if you have a flathead. Another important thing that you want to look for is a variable throttle control. If it is a fixed speed throttle, I would recommend not using it. That is not the optimal setup. For the alternator, this is a 27SI alternator. And you can look up from uh, auto parts stores what uses a 27SI. This probably came off of a, I don't know, an 82 Camaro or something like that. I'm not sure, but uh, I purchased this one from an auto store. It only cost me around 70 bucks. It has a lifetime warranty, should last a couple thousand hours. And I did test this out. I can run it at full load continuously and it doesn't uh, really break a sweat at all. Now that is not true of other alternators on the market. So you can't use just any alternator. I would recommend a 27SI. They work quite well. The uh, CS130s and such don't work very well for this. For pulley setups, I got this one from JEGS. This is an aluminum racing pulley. A lot of people say that it's an underdrive pulley. That is incorrect. This actually is a racing pulley. An underdrive pulley generally goes on the crankshaft of your engine, not on the alternator, because if you put this on an ordinary car, this is way too large and it won't generate much of anything at all at idle. In a racing application, your engine is always screaming along at 5,000 RPMs or more, and this size pulley is adequate. It keeps the alternator in a more efficient range and allows more horsepower to the wheels, which is what you want. And uh, yes, this is a racing pulley. But uh, it's a good size in this application. I think it's about 5 inches in diameter. And over here on the engine, I also have a 5 inch pulley. So basically you want a 1 to 1 ratio from your engine to your alternator. And using a small pulley on the alternator, like what they normally come with from the factory, doesn't work very well. I won't go over why, but I would recommend this setup. Also this is a Kevlar belt. If you use a standard neoprene belt, they uh, are more elastic than the uh, Kevlar type, um, and they're also a couple bucks cheaper, but you really don't need that elasticity for this setup, so I just recommend getting a Kevlar belt. And over here I have an hour meter. Uh, you can see that I've run this thing for about seven hours. 
And I also wrote down the last time I changed the oil, just for my sake. But anyway, this is the general setup. And in my videos I went over how to hook up the alternator. You can also look that up on the internet. I have a fused for 120 amps, just in case. I have here this momentary switch to enable it. I'll go over that a little bit later. And then I have it wired up to my battery bank in my basement. Currently I'm in my garage. And it runs through these uh, 6 gauge cables to this quick disconnect. And then up through some 0 gauge cabling that I have running into my basement. So let's quick go to my basement and see what that is. Here we are in my basement. I have a split foyer so it runs in right here, runs down over here through another quick disconnect and then into my battery bank. So this way I can safely disconnect it on either side without any risk of shorting something. I also have it running through this fuse. Good practice I guess, not really necessary. And then my battery bank. I have a video series on this particular battery bank as well. I think there's 12, I believe. Don't remember exactly, but 12 of these industrial batteries in this battery bank. I was lucky enough to get these in good condition as salvage equipment, which was pretty awesome. So I have my battery charger from the garage going into this end and the inverter hooked up to the other end. This inverter is a Samlex Pure Sine Wave 3000 watt inverter. I did purchase this one. It's a very nice inverter. I've gone through a lot of inverters. I have a lot of inverter reviews out there. And I kept this one, which says something about it. It's awesome. I love it. Over here I have my voltmeter. You can see that this battery bank is currently 13.1 volts. And this meter is just connected up to these leads. So it includes the voltage drop of these cables going down to the batteries. But uh, we'll ignore that for now. So this is my inverter. Outside I have my generator. So I can run my generator to power up the batteries. If I had solar panels, I could also use those and uh, use the generator as a backup. I don't currently have a space for solar panels, unfortunately, but these batteries here will last me about one day for powering my whole house. Now for connecting this to my house, I also made a video series on that. I'll put these links in the description below. But to connect this to the house, well, how do you connect that to a house? Well, you use a cable like this. It is not the safest thing in the world to mail ends, and there are a lot of caveats to this in order to do it safely, and uh, I would encourage you to watch my video series on that if you're interested in it. But I actually do it a little bit differently than I do in that series because I built something else. I built this particular cable here. All it is is a 20, dual 20 amp outlet, and the two are split apart, so each outlet is on a separate phase and then it plugs into my dryer outlet. And this allows me to power both phases of my house very conveniently from one location. I can also just plug this into my wall and get two 20 amp outlets if I want that. In any case, most of you probably want to see this thing actually running. So let's go out to the garage and uh, start it up. I'm going to start this up and show you it operating here shortly, but first I want to temper expectations just a little bit. This engine says six horsepower. Now, if you bought a generator set, a 6 horsepower engine would power about a 3000 watt generator. But that'd be 3000 watt surge. It would be 2500, 2600 watts continuous. However, this has an automotive alternator that is a 100 amp automotive alternator. And this setup is optimized for about 80 amps output. That means it only outputs about a kilowatt of power. And that may seem pathetic, but it really is a pretty good design, and uh, I'm going to quick go over that. You can skip this if you're not interested. But this particular engine can do 6 horsepower at 3600 RPM. This is not a generator govern governor engine. This has a utility governor on it. That means that at 3600 RPMs, it does not hold a steady 3600 RPMs. Under load, it sags a bit. It might go down to 3200 RPMs, something like that. And at 3200 RPMs, it can no longer do 6 horsepower. Now, I don't want this screaming away at 3600 RPMs. It's really inefficient, really loud, really annoying, and uh, I just don't want that. So I optimized this setup so that both the engine and the alternator are operating at their optimum efficiency point. This engine is most efficient, uh, as are all engines of this type, is most efficient at about 2500 RPMs and about 70% output torque. Alternators are most efficient at about 2500 RPMs alternator speed and around uh, uh, full, full load, um, full field. And 
This particular alternator is a 100 amp alternator if you spin it way up, screaming fast, but it gets to be about 50% efficient if you do that. It's closer to 70% efficient if you run it this way. You only get 80 amps, that's the trade-off, but that way both the engine and the alternator operate at their optimum efficiency point. So if you consider all of the losses in this system, your engine at 2500 RPMs only outputs a certain amount of power. You can only really use about 80% of that power if you want to do a real continuous load, so you have to subtract that. The belt setup takes maybe 10% of that power away again. Your alternator's 65% efficient, something like that. And after all of these losses are considered, this setup fully loads the engine at 2500 RPMs and powers this alternator at, op at its optimum efficiency point. This particular engine was purchased new old stock from Japan back when Briggs & Stratton made their Vanguard engines in Japan. I don't want their Chinese junk, so I got this one. Uh, the Honda GX engines would be the probably the best on the market for this particular setup. And this particular setup here should operate for around 2,000 hours quite reliably before anything needs to be serviced, other than oil changes and the like. But uh, let's uh, show you how to get this thing started up. Now, first of all, I don't store this with the belt tight. Uh, I could, but I just don't do that, so I'll show you how I tighten the belt. So basically, I just take a big old pry bar, stick it in here, and tighten it up. And this particular bolt here that holds it in place happens to be half inch. And now the belt is nice and tight. Next, I open the garage door just a little bit. and kick the exhaust pipe underneath the garage. There we go, now the exhaust goes outside. And next I can start it up, but before I do, because it'll be loud and I can't talk, I'll describe what I'm going to do here. First of all, this alternator is connected up to the batteries right now. So if I take a look at the uh, battery voltage, you can see here that the battery voltage is about 13.1 volts. And when I start this thing up, the voltage will go up. I also have this ammeter clamped around the cable so we can see how many amps it's providing. Now this here is the startup switch. It's just a momentary switch and that's important because when I hit this switch, the amperage pops up to something uh, relatively high. Four to eight amps, depending on how the brushes happen to be sitting inside this alternator. And that drains your battery. You could hook it up to a lamp or something, but I think a momentary switch is easiest. That way I can just fill this tank up, let it run until it runs out of fuel, a couple of hours, and then it doesn't draw any current anymore, which is perfect for my application. So let's start this thing up. Here we are in my basement again, and I forgot to mention that that generator setup is designed so that it can operate in both the coldest and the hottest weather. That's important. That alternator outputs about 80 amps during the summer. It does 100 or a little bit more amps during the winter because it's colder, and the engine can't produce as much power when it's cold as when it's warm, so there's a, a trade-off there to make sure the engine doesn't bog down. But you can kind of hear the engine run in the background in my house, but it's not very loud. And over here, you can see that the voltage is now 14.5 volts, so it is charging these batteries. 
but they're pretty well fully charged, so let's turn the inverter on. There's the inverter running, and let's load the inverter down a little bit so that we can uh, actually test out this generator and see what it can do. I plugged in about 500 watts of halogen light, and now the inverter is, uh, or the generator is now powering these halogen lights. You can see that the battery voltage is still 13.6 volts, even after running through all these cables. At the alternator, it's still over 14 volts, I'm sure. It does have to run through 40 feet of cabling or so, so there's some voltage drop in that. I lose about a volt at 100 amps through all that cabling. In any case, it should have no trouble powering 500 watt load, so let's load it down with another 1500 watt electric heater. And these are obviously just dummy loads. So, now we have a much lower voltage. The alternator should be outputting uh, a good amount of power and the engine is about as loaded as it's going to get. So let's go check on it and see how it's doing. And there we go. My inverter generator here is working just fine. It outputs around 80 amps continuously. It doesn't get too hot doing it. Recharges my battery bank if I choose to do that. I can just fill it up with gasoline, start it up. It runs for a few hours until it runs out of fuel and it quits. And uh, at that point, well, I'm just running on batteries again. And I have used this setup to run my entire house. I tried it out for a full day just to see how it worked. And it worked pretty well. I've also used it through one power outage already. So I wanted to show you my 12 volt DC generator actually operating. And this is it, operating with my battery bank and my inverter. Thanks for watching.